Ash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. Good morning, Boom. It's 7.35 a.m. So what happened this morning was Boo was on top of the cat tower looking out of the window. And then all of a sudden, he jumped down and he ran down the hall. And I was like, what's he doing? I thought maybe he's going to go to the litter box. But he didn't. And I was like, what'd you see, Boo? What did you see? And I looked outside and Hydrax was on the patio. So then I opened this back door. And then Hydrax came up to the door and he was meowing. But I had to keep getting ready for my day. So that's what I did. And right now I'm just about to feed him. He looks very good today. And I know there's some reflections on the door. So. But... Um, when I opened the door, he was eating out of the feeder, like he was eating dry food. So that could explain why some some mornings he doesn't want to eat, because maybe he eats breakfast out of the feeder. And here's Boo. How are you, Boo? Boo likes to see what's going on. Hello, Boo. Hijax is watching me pet Boo. Boo, tell Hydrox, tell Hydrox not to be afraid of me. Tell Hydrox I'm a nice person, Boo. Tell him not to be afraid of me. Mm, there's a bug. Boo sees a bug. <laughs> the bug's outside. Boo, you have such soft fur. Hello, Hydrox, want some food? You want some food, Hydrox? Would you like some food? Come on. Eat the food, Hydrox. He should eat it. Eat it, Hydrox, go ahead, I'll back away. Hydrox, eat the food, I gave it to you. He told me he wanted me to move the food over toward the other side, so I did. Mm, he should eat it. For the inside cats for breakfast, I am going to give them the chicken and white fish recipe. We'll see if they like that. Let's check out the ingredients on the chicken and white fish. They are chicken broth, chicken, poultry liver, white fish, and dried egg product. Those are the first five ingredients, followed by guar gum, potassium chloride, salt, minerals, and then it lists all of the minerals, vitamins, it lists all of the vitamins. Carrageenan is way at the end with choline chloride and taurine. So this is a good food for cats. It's strictly protein. Um, with the ingredients, I don't see any anything that would be a carbohydrate. Splash, are you hungry? Do you want breakfast? This is what the chicken and white fish looks like. It basically looks like a typical pate. All the cats are eating their food. Splash is thinking about it. <laughs> He's going to walk away. That's what he does. So, it looks like Simba's not finishing his food. And I just gave Splash his plate, but he sniffed it and walked away. What I need to do is make sure Stella and Boo don't eat more than their portion. So I'm going to have to pick up Simba's plate and pick up Splash's plate. So when it comes to canned food, Boo has no problem eating it as fast as he can. For some reason with the raw food, even with the same texture, he eats it slower. Okay, I gotta pick that up. Simba has decided he wants to eat by the steps. Uh oh, Boo's looking at him. This 
So right now it is 5.23 p.m. and I'm in my car and I was about a block and a half away from my house when all of a sudden a black and white cat just came running across the street in front of my car like really really fast and at first I thought it was ditto because the two back legs were all white and it had like an all white bib and it was a black, you know, the black back and it looked more like ditto than Hydrox. But what happened was once it crossed the street, it stopped in someone's driveway and then it turned around and looked at me and it did not have any white markings on its face. So it had an all black face, but it had like a white bib like ditto and it had two all white back legs like ditto. And you know, it was a tuxedo cat. So it definitely, like at first I thought it was Hydrox, but then when I looked at the back legs to see if it was Hydrox or ditto, I said, oh, it must be ditto because it had so much white on the back legs. But then when it stopped in the driveway and it turned in and looked at me and it did have, it did not have either of their faces, that's when I said, oh my gosh, there's a third cat. There's a third cat that looks like Hydrox and ditto. And the difference is it does not have any white on its face. And I just wanted to document that and I'm sorry for the clouds and the trees. It's just, you know, for privacy purposes, that's why I'm doing that. It's 7 p.m. right now, and it's already dark. I really don't like when it gets dark so early, and it's gonna continue to get dark earlier and earlier, but at least it's nice and warm out. Like, it's 80-something degrees today, and it's October, so I absolutely love that weather. I just gave Hydrox two scoops of homemade raw food with some chicken broth added, and then the anti-parasite herbs, so he seemed to enjoy that. It's about 7.30 p.m. right now and the inside cats are eating their dinner. They're getting three scoops of homemade raw food, one scoop of the primal raw rabbit nuggets, all mixed together with some homemade chicken broth. Um, they're getting a dollop of the homemade chicken baby food in the middle. They're getting some crunchies. Boo's getting his herbs. And Splash should be really hungry because he did not eat breakfast. And I put his food aside for him thinking I would give it to him, but I didn't have a chance to do that. So I just gave his breakfast to Hydrox and Hydrox ate it. Uh, same thing goes for Simba's breakfast, the half of it that he did not eat. Um, I thought I would be giving that to him before I left for my day, but I didn't have a chance to do that. So Hydrox just ate that along with Splashes. So the two of them should be very hungry. Uh, again, it's not a bad thing if they skip a meal um, they get plenty of food on a regular basis. Skipping a meal or even two meals here and there is not going to have a negative effect on them. If anything, it would have a positive effect on them because in nature, when cats uh, are living off of prey, you know, they don't always have a successful hunt. So they might go, you know, a day or two uh, without eating anything. So it's not a bad thing for them to fast um, for, you know, if they miss a meal or two. So I don't mind that. And yeah, they're they're all eating their dinner really well. Boo's slow as usual, but that's fine. Splash is being cautious. He doesn't want to get too close to Boo. So I will pick up Splash's plate. Maybe he'll go back and finish it or maybe I'll bring it up to him. He's just at the top of the stairs looking at Hydrox. It's 7.57 p.m. right now. I'm a little bit weirded out, so I'm walking around the house trying to figure something out. Here's Hijox. He's hanging out by the back door. This is what he likes to do now at night. He likes to just hang out here. Let me explain what's going on and why I just checked every open window in the house. So... I'm sitting on the sofa and I'm finishing a video 
to post tonight. I'm almost done with it. And I do have several windows of the house open. And all of a sudden, I get a very strong aroma of cigarettes. Like someone is smoking a cigarette. And I was like, where is that coming from? And I looked at Boo, who was sitting near the nearest open window, and he wasn't acting strange or anything, so I was like, that's odd, because if someone was outside, normally he'd be looking at them or acting a little bit weird. So then I got up, and I just started looking around. I started looking at every open window and smelling the air that was coming through every open window. And nowhere uh, did I smell cigarettes. But when I walk back into this room to where I was sitting on the sofa, I still smelled cigarettes. So something really weird's going on. Right, Stella? It's almost 11 p.m. and the cats are getting a snack tonight. Uh, they're getting this before their crunchies. I had half of a can of the Pure Harmony turkey and salmon cat food. And I also put some CBD oil on each one. Um, each little plate has three drops of CBD oil. And the reason why is because... In a few days, I'm going away on an overnight trip, and the vet said that the next time I do that, make sure I prep Boo with some CBD oil um, and see if he does not have a recurrence of, you know, the litter box issues. Um, if it's anxiety related, by giving him some sort of anti anxiety uh, supplement. Um, perhaps he won't do that. So I'm starting today. Um, all the cats are getting three drops each. Tomorrow, I'll give them a little bit more. Um, the day after, I'll give them a little bit more. And then the following day is the day that I'll be away. So um, we'll see how it works. This will be an experiment. So I put one tablespoon of crunchies on each plate. So Boo's eating his food. And Stella, Splash, and Simba did not want to eat theirs without Crunchy, so we'll see. We'll see if they actually eat it or if they leave it. Boo just finished his. Simba left his food, and Boo's gonna eat it. I don't know what's going on here. Boo says he's ready for some more Crunchies. He's sitting next to the jar, but we're waiting for Splash. Splash is finishing some of the uh, the wet food. I think he's finishing Stella's. So Splash really liked the wet food. And Boo had two servings of it, which would be six drops of the CBD, which is fine. And um, then Splash potentially had two servings. So that's good too. It is 6.53 a.m. And all of the cats slept where they were all night. So Stella slept here on the end of the bed all night. Simba slept here all night. When I say all night, it's like from when I went to bed until when I woke up. So it looks like the CBD oil definitely helped them relax. Boo slept here all night. Boo slept on top of the cat tower. And unfortunately, I don't know where Splash slept all night because he was in a different room. Good morning, Boo. How are you? Boo's in a good mood this morning. Hello, Stella.
It is 8.39 a.m. And I opened the back door and Hydrax was hanging out in the dry spot. There's like a dry spot near the back door because there is a slight overhang. And it's been raining this morning. So uh, he hung out there for a while and then he moved over and I said, Hydrax, I'll give you some food. So he moved over to this section of the patio and he was sitting in the rain. And I'm like, Hydrax, I'm putting your food under the feeding table so it doesn't get wet. You could eat it without getting wet. So I put it there and I come back inside and I'm getting stuff ready for the cats. I'm filling up their water bowls and stuff. And I look outside and Hydrax is still just hanging out on that area of the patio, just sitting in the rain. And he's like, no, I want to eat here. I want to eat here. I don't want to eat under the table. I had to then go outside, get the plate of food from under the table, and put it near Hydrax over here on the patio, and now he's eating his food. And the way I knew that was because I was listening to what he was telling me telepathically, like through his thoughts. Uh, maybe also through the way he was sitting there. I mean, but he was just sitting there, but he was just pretty much like insisting like no I want to eat here I don't want to eat under the table um, so always just be very observant when it comes to cats and listen to what they're telling you look he just ate all that food I just wanted to expand on the concept of listening to your cats because you can't listen to your cats when you're thinking like if you're thinking if you're actively thinking about something then you can't hear what a cat is trying to tell you. The best way I could describe it is, let's say you're home alone and it's in the middle of the night and you hear a noise. And you're like, what is that noise? So you do nothing but listen for that noise. Like, where's the noise coming from? You're completely focused on listening. I just gave Hydrox almost half of a can of cat food because he was continuing to sit there in the rain and telling me he wanted more food. So that's what he's getting, but that's all he's getting. Okay, so this is a first for Hydrox. So Hydrox still wanted more food. He was hanging out right by the back door and he was meowing and meowing. So I said, okay, Hydrox, I'll give you more food, except it's raining even harder now. So. I just put it here by the back door where he was and he's eating it. He's never eaten food this close to the door before. But this is like one of the few dry places that are available right now. But he looks nice. I mean, look at Hydrox's fur. I know you're looking through a door and there's a reflection on it. But Hydrox's fur looks almost as nice as Boo's fur. And I remember when I first started looking to buy raw food for the cats, like when I made the decision that, okay, I'm going to put them on raw food because I saw like how much more energy they had when they hunted a bird. Like when they were living outside, when they hunted a bird, they would have so much energy after eating it. Like it was a night and day difference between giving them canned food because I would give them canned food and they really would not have a whole lot of energy after eating it. So that was one of the prime reasons why I wanted to start them on raw food because like I just saw such a big difference. Now I always knew raw food was healthy for humans and when I say raw food for humans I mean fruits and vegetables. Raw fruits and raw vegetables are the healthiest foods that humans can eat. Um, and with cats the same would be true but it would be raw meat. And Back to what I was saying was the first time when I was looking at stores to see, well, what raw foods are available to buy for cats, I remember meeting a rep from Nature's Variety, and that's a company that sells the raw food, and they were doing like a demo day in the store, and she told me that uh, one of the first things you'll notice is that the fur, the cat's fur will become like so soft and really fluffy and thick and I mean we see that with Hydrox so his fur was an absolute mess before and then he started eating the raw food because now I'm using the grinder plate that makes it like like a puree or a, more like a pate because it's like um 
it grinds the bones down to almost nothing. So he has a much easier time eating it. I mean, you could just look at his fur and his coat and just see what an amazing improvement it is. And it's all because he's been eating the raw food now. Right, Boo? Boo says right. It's 9.28 a.m. I'm just about to leave for my day. And look what's going on. Hydrox is hanging out with Boo. Hey, doing Hydrox. I'm running about a half hour late right now. So I really can't give them a whole lot more time to hang out together. I'm not giving Hydrox any more food because I have to leave. Plus he had plenty of food. He had like a whole can of food and two scoops of raw food and herbs. Sorry, Hydrox, no more food. You had enough. He knows I'm talking about him. It's 2.58 p.m. I just got home and I am so glad that I did because this giant box was waiting for me by the front door. I mean, it's huge and it's soaked because it's raining. Like, it is soaked. So if I did not get home now and instead got home like hours later, it would just be a total mess, much more than the current mess that it is. This is Boo's day bed. It is almost two years old. I originally had a vintage love seat in this room. Um, it was circa the 1950s or the 1960s. And it was not as long uh, as this day bed is. And it looked really nice, but it was not comfortable at all, especially if you wanted to lay down and sleep on it. And with Boo being inside a house for the first time, um, there were some nights when I just wanted to stay in here with him, whether uh, for the whole night or a part of the night. Um, so I wanted something more comfortable, but I did not want to um, buy anything that was expensive or substantial because in my mind it was more of a temporary thing. So I ordered this day bed online. It was just a little bit less than a hundred dollars and it definitely served its purpose. Boo loves laying on it and I even spent a few nights sleeping on it and it it's comfortable considering what it is. Um, but I also liked it because it folds up, um, it has wheels, it's portable, um, it's great to keep around as like an extra guest bed if you have uh, people sleeping over. It's good for that. It's also good for traveling. If you're going to stay at a friend's house, you could bring your own little bed with you. Or if you're going camping, uh, you could bring this bed with you. Um, it would probably even work well in a van or a camper. Like if you're going to do a van build or something like that as um, a little portable bed type thing. Um, so it, it does have a lot of uses. I don't regret buying it. Um, I think for the money that I spent, I already got my money's worth. And so what I am going to do now is take everything off this bed. I'm going to fold it up and I'm going to put it in like a back storage room that I have downstairs. And I am going to now put together the brand new piece of furniture that I just ordered from World Market. And it is a multi-function futon which means that it can be a love seat a chase lounge or a bed and when i saw it in the store i thought it was absolutely perfect for this little room um, because it's a space saving piece of furniture and it has so many functions like i've often wished i had a chase lounge here so i could just relax and read some magazines or a book, and the new piece of furniture will do that. It also becomes a bed like this, so if I want to keep it out like a day bed, I can do that. It's actually just a little bit longer and a little bit wider. And then the sides also fold up, and it's a nice little love seat or very small apartment-sized sofa. So let's start putting that together. This is what it looks like underneath the bedding. It has about a four inch thick mattress. And then under the mattress, what I liked about this one, you can see it has springs and then it has 
like that solid um, fabric in the middle. So to me, this is a lot like a sofa bed. If you've ever pulled out a sofa bed, they're a lot like this. Uh, other similar um, portable beds had like the slats, um, which are not as comfortable, um, but this one is really comfy. So here are the various pieces of the new piece of furniture. This is the bottom. Um, see what I mean with like the slats that go across? Uh, but this one has a thicker futon pad on it, so it's more comfortable. And that uh, is the back railing. I'm just trying to lay them out how I remember them in the store. And these are the adjustable side pieces. And then I believe these pieces are like the feet of it. I have to go get the um, instructions. I did not expect this piece of furniture to be here today. Originally, I saw an email that said it was supposed to arrive about 10 days after today, um, like at least a week after today. So I was definitely planning for the furniture to arrive next week and not this week. So it's a bit of a surprise. I'm definitely not prepared for it. They say to assemble it on a non-marring surface. So I just took the little comforter bedspread that was on the day bed and I put it on the floor because this needs to be washed. Uh, so I'll just use this. So the first thing to do is to attach the legs to both sides of the frame. And the legs have stickers on them that say front. Just want to make sure the front's in the front. So the right one was just screwed on. And then this is the left one. And they get screwed on with these bolts that require a Phillips head screwdriver. That's what it looks like before it's screwed in. The legs have been screwed on. It only took like a minute for each side and it's actually quite sturdy. This is what the first side looks like. It's a little bit trickier to put this piece on. You have to use the Allen wrench and you have to make sure that everything is aligned correctly. Um, but um, this is what the side of the sofa or the love seat would look like. And then this piece also adjusts, you pull it up and then it lays flat. So when this turns into a bed, uh, the sides are flat. This is what the frame looks like after it has been assembled. Both of the sides are up right now. They did put a warning in the instructions saying, don't sit on one of the ends of the bed. Like when these are down, don't sit on the end because it could end up breaking it. So only put the main part of your body weight on this part. And here we have it after it has all been put together. Looks really comfy. They give you a lot of pillows. It looks really good. I'm gonna test it out now. And this is what it looks like as a chaise lounge with this one side down. I spread the pillows out a little bit. I still have all the tags on the pillows, so It'll look nice when I take the tags off. Also, what I'm probably going to end up doing is putting like fabric over this and maybe even putting covers on the pillows um, or maybe just swapping the pillows out with booze pillows. Um, but yeah, it looks good. Here's what it looks like if I put the boo pillows back on the bed. And then if I put one of the cat's little blankets for now. It's about 10.30 p.m. right now and the cats are getting a treat tonight. They're getting some uh, tuna in a pouch. I want to say it's nature's balance, but I forget. And they're getting a few crunchies on top of it. And they're getting about six drops of the CBD oil for cats. So last night they each got three drops. And today, I put about six drops on each plate. A few plates had like only four. Simba's making such a mess right now. Simba's chewing his fish, but all over the rug. So my main concern is Boo and Splash. And I made sure that their portions both had six drops. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how tonight goes with that. Thank you for watching this Lucky Ferals video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos, and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.